like to call this meeting to order. I need a motion to go into closed meeting. Be it resolved, the Board of Supervisors hereby enters into closed meeting for the purpose of discussing the following. Section 2.2-3711, discussion, consideration, or interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, of promotions, performance, demotion, salaries, discipline, or resignation of specific officers, appointees, or employees of any public body. Under that, uh, we will talk about the Community Services Board, Planning District Commission, Roanoke Valley Area MPO. Discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for the public purpose or of the disposition of publicly held real property where a discussion and open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body. Allegheny Springs, Mid County, O. Blacksburg Middle School. Consultation with legal counsel and briefing from staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable, probable litigation where such consultation or briefing and open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigating posture of the public body and consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by public body regarding specific matters, specific legal matters requiring provision of, of legal advice by such counsel. That's the uh, polling precinct at Virginia Tech. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Green? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six aye. We're in closed meeting. She said she was retiring to a closed First thing before we go out of closed meeting, I'd like to apologize to you all. We usually try to start promptly at 7.15 and we run over a little bit and I apologize for that. But I need a motion to go out of closed meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Cree? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six ayes. Okay, let me go back to the certification. Okay, certification of closed meeting. Whereas the Board of Supervisors of Montgomery County has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Whereas section 2.23711 of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Montgomery County, Virginia, hereby certifies that, to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempt from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting, to which this certification resolution applies, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion conveying the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the board. we we'll have a motion. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Cree? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six ayes. Okay. Mr. Cree? Aye. Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Aye. The next item on our agenda is our invocation where we observe a moment of silence to reflect on the business at hand. And we will be, after that moment of silence, we will be led by uh, Mr. Meadows in the pledge. Let us pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I 
Uh, next order of business is a public hearing. Uh, the following public hearing was advertised pursuant to law in the Berg section of the Roanoke Times on March 27th, April the 3rd, and April the 10th. It's a special use permit for P&G Ventures uh, Agent uh, Meat Tractor. Mr. Chairman, because of the conflict, I cannot get involved with this public hearing. I, I was on the Planning Commission, stepped down off the dais, and I guess that would be the appropriate thing to do now at this point. Thank you for the disclosure. And Mr. Chair, Aaron Puckett from our Planning Department is going to run through this with us tonight. Aaron, glad to have you in front of us tonight. And I might get you to turn the microphone. That's all right. There you go. We want the whole world to hear you. <laughs> Good evening. The request in front of you tonight is for a special use permit which would allow the use of an existing building currently located at 3963 South Main Street, which was previously an automobile dealership as a John Deere turf and agricultural dealership. This use does fall under the definition of farm machinery sales and service in our zoning ordinance, so it does require a special use permit in a general business district. Meat Tractor is currently located in the county on Radford Road, and through this request, um, they would be seeking a new location with better visibility. On this map, you can see where the property is located. It's just northeast of the town of Christiansburg boundary on South Main. On the aerial photo, you can see that the property does front on both 460 Business, South Main Street, um, as well as the 460 Bypass. The only access is from South Main Street, but the property is visible from the 460 bypass. This is the zoning map, and you can see that the property is zoned general business, or GB. Um, it is surrounded by other general business properties. Some of these properties are currently being used for commercial purposes. The one exception is the property just to the north here does have a single family dwelling on it. However, that is currently vacant. In our comprehensive plan, the property is currently designated as urban expansion. This particular policy area in the comprehensive plan does encourage both residential and non-residential uses. It also does support commercial uses along existing roads, so the request in front of you tonight would be in compliance with the comp plan. We're going to go through just a couple pictures of the site so you can see what it looks like today. This would be the view from the entrance on South Main Street looking towards the front of the building. You can see on the left hand side of the picture that single family dwelling I mentioned before that is currently vacant is visible from the property. This is the view from that front parking lot looking back towards South Main Street. Um, you can see the other kinds of commercial uses that are along that corridor. This is the view from the southeastern side of the property. We're looking across the rear of the property. You can see the fenced-in area where um, potentially there would be storage of equipment and machinery. You can also see on the right-hand side of the photo the visibility of the 460 bypass. Regarding impacts, the proposed use will be utilizing an existing building um, with currently no expansion proposed. Any future expansion of that building would require a site plan review process by the planning department. In addition, um, while the proposed John Deere Turf and Agricultural Dealership will sell some farm machinery, the applicant has indicated that the majority of sales will come from smaller consumer equipment such as mowers and outdoor power equipment. In regards to traffic, the applicant estimates the traffic will be lower than the previous use as an automobile dealership due to the more seasonal nature of the business. VDOT has also confirmed with our department that the existing entrance will be adequate for the proposed use. The property is currently served by the county PSA for both sewer and water. Um, really no other negative impacts are expected on other infrastructure. Again, there's no current expansion of that building proposed. Um, the current use, or excuse me, the proposed use will use the current building as is. Any future expansion would require approval by the planning department. Um, the fence around the rear storage area of the property will help with screening. In addition, the applicant has stated that existing landscaping will be maintained, and in the rear of the property, some additional landscaping is proposed that will help mitigate that visual impact along the bypass. This is a drawing that the applicant has provided um, a sort of a concept 
excuse me, concept drawing of what the property would look like looking from the 460 bypass to the rear of the property. You can see that fenced area where there's proposed storage of equipment and materials, as well as a display area for tractors and other equipment, and some maintain and or additional landscaping. Um, the sign, as you see in the picture, that will also require approval by the planning department to ensure it meets county code requirements. So at the public hearing on April 9th, the Planning Commission did recommend by a vote of 8 to 0 that we approve the request um, with some following conditions. This first one, we've had some recent changes based on recent conversations with the applicant since the Planning Commission meeting. This is the, repo excuse me, the proposed change, which you'll see in red. Um, staff have worked with the applicant to allow greater flexibility with some of the screening conditions. So the condition is now that the outdoor storage of materials and or equipment will be limited to that fenced area. The screening of outdoor storage shall con consist of privacy or chain link fencing, and the screening materials shall be attached to chain link fencing to prevent any visual access. Storage containers will not be allowed to be stored or used on the property for a period longer than one week. Any exterior lighting and any signage will need to comply with the zoning ordinance. In addition to that, banners or signs will not be allowed to be mounted on any fences. The site will need to be in compliance with the concept plan that has been submitted with the applicant's materials dated February 28th. And again, any future expansion or any new construction on the site that would necessitate a building permit will also require approval of a new or revised site plan. And with that, I'm um, happy to take any questions, and I believe the applicant is here as well if you have questions for them. <coughs> questions, board members? Yes. Just had one. There was no opposition to this. There was not. We had two phone calls prior to the planning commission meeting. Um, both were just looking to find out why they had not noticed, but once we explained it, uh, they didn't have any comments against the proposed use. We did have one citizen come out to our planning commission meeting who spoke in favor of the application. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thank Done you. a fine job. Thanks, Aaron. Now, I guess uh, we move on. Yeah, well, since it's a public hearing, you can see if there's anybody in the audience. Uh, nobody signed up to speak at this public hearing, but if it's anyone in the audience that would like to speak, uh, please do so at this time. You have five minutes. Uh, come to the podium and direct all your comments to the board, and you have five minutes and state your name and address. Good evening. Uh, Chuck Mead, 2868 Island Grove Drive, Johnson City, Tennessee. Uh, first, my name is, uh, again, Chuck Mead, and I'm president of Mead Tractor. Um, and I'm here, and I appreciate the opportunity to discuss Mead Tractor's potential relocation within Montgomery County from Radford Grove to uh, South Main Street. A little background on Mead Tractor. We are a family-owned dealership based out of uh, Abingdon, Virginia. Both my brother and I are, are graduates for Virginia Tech, and we have a great affinity for uh, Christiansburg and Montgomery County area. We have seven dealerships throughout uh, Southwest Virginia, Northeast Tennessee, and we began in uh, Christiansburg in 2012 with the purchase of S.G. Wimmer, which uh, Mr. Wimmer's son Charles Wimmer still works with us, and uh, the Wimmers have been in business for over 70 years and uh, with service to Montgomery County and, and Christiansburg. And as we said, we are honored to be a uh, John Deere dealer. Uh, John Deere is an American legend that recently celebrated 175 years in business. And our business model has two components. First is the traditional ag component. And second of all is the, the retail component with lawn mowers and trimmers and even John Deere apparel and, and clothing. And this new location will help to strengthen our visibility for our retail business and it will also strengthen our agricultural business because we'll have uh, modern faci facilities that increase uh, the efficiencies in our parts and service departments, which is uh, prime of importance to, to farmers that need uptime with their equipment. 
And the current zoning requires that businesses that engage in farm machinery to uh, receive a special use permit. So again, we do sell farm machinery, uh, which is a critical link for our <coughs> farmers. And farming is very important to not only our country, but also to this region as well. Uh, Air relocation will help to provide a tenant to a building that has been vacant for over six years. This daily traffic visibility from 460 will now have a new and thriving business rather than a vacant building and will offer increased opportunities for the surrounding businesses we feel with increased traffic. Our facility will be neat, clean, and representative of a retail store that our customers, employees, and community will be proud of. And we request that this be approved. We have a seasonal business, and every day that we're not in a highly visible area, we're losing sales and business that, that we could use to invest back into the community with uh, increased employment and uh, in increased opportunities to support uh, the, the local uh, businesses and, and uh, uh, charities that we support in the area. And with that, thanks for the opportunity, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have with myself. Any right. questions for Mr. Meade? Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank you for being here. Any other members in the audience who would like to speak on this public hearing? Aaron, please do so at this time. Seeing no others come forward, I will close this public hearing. Addendum, do we have an addendum, Mr. Mattis? I believe we do request to add an item. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to, uh, on this meat deal, <clears throat> I don't right know how to do it, so I'll just bring it out. Since there was no opposition to their uh, ordinance or anything, I'd like to see if we couldn't go ahead. I know we're supposed to wait one or two weeks, but since the Planning Commission passed it, and it is our busiest time of the year, I'd like to go ahead, if we could tonight, and see if we couldn't vote for this so they could go ahead and get the business. And we do have a draft ordinance prepared that can be added to the agenda under any business, Mr. Chair, if you'd like to do that. Okay, we will take it and add uh, this item. Uh, your turn. Oh. Just to make clear, everyone in the audience, those ordinances is consistent with uh, the presentation Board board, so if the board is that okay with that, we can go motion and second. We're going to have a motion and second to uh, add it to the agenda. Okay, we have a motion and a second to add it uh, to what, new business? Yes. Okay, would the clerk please call the roll? We need a, we need I'll a do second. the okay. second. Okay. I I'll thought we the, had a second. I'll do the second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Now, would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Tyler? I have to abstain at the time that this came before the board. Um, I was representing Duncan Automotive or Duncan Ford Group. Those owners of that corporation also are the property owners or partial prop uh, owners of the property in question. Because of that, based on advice of counsel, I have to abstain. Mr. Gabriel? Um, this is simply to add this to the agenda. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Aye. Mr. Curry? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Big? Aye. Chair Aye. 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 Okay. We'll move on to public address. If it's anyone here uh, who wishes to address the board about any county business or, or anything of that nature, you can do so at this time. You have five minutes and please come to the podium, use the mic and state your name and address. Seeing no one coming forward, we'll close the public address session. Our next item on the agenda is the, is the uh, consent agenda. Move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion, any items on the agenda? Nope. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Curry? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Chair Ryan? Aye. Six ayes. Next item would be uh, into work session. So moved. Second. second. Have a motion and a second. And the 
items uh, that we're voting on and, and going in the work session would be stormwater management and the Virginia retirement system. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Cree? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Fix? Aye. Mr. Todd? Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six ayes. We're now in work session. Mr. Chair, the first item this evening is an update on our stormwater management uh, program. As you recall, several meetings ago, we had Mike Lawless from Draper Aiden here to brief us on uh, where we were with that program. And tonight, I'd like to introduce you to Carolyn Howard. Carolyn is with Draper Aiden and has done a tremendous amount of work in helping us get our draft ordinance uh, put together and also uh, beginning to help us walk through the steps of, or the next steps of what we're going to need to do with our stormwater management program. So, Carolyn, I know you've got a presentation to share, so I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Thank you very much. Chairman and members of the board, I'm excited to finally be here. Um, first few times I was unable to, to be here, so this is, this is a good opportunity. Um, again, my name is Carolyn Howard, and I'm the Stormwater Program Manager for Draper Aid Associates here in, in Blacksburg. And I know you've heard a lot about <coughs> the stormwater stuff, and today's the perfect day to talk about stormwater. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know if you heard all the rain while you were in your closed session, but it was pouring. I was trying to come into the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, I'm here to kind of give you an overview again of, of what we're talking about and go into a little more detail about your stormwater program. Okay, so your stormwater program is, consists of two parts. The first part is what's called the Virginia Stormwater Management Program. And what that relates to are, is all new construction. So as of July 1st, 2014, you will be responsible for um, reviewing plans and things like that. The second part of your program is what's called the MS4 permit, the Municipal Separate Storm Sewer Program Permit, which we still don't have a permit yet, but that's for existing conditions and for new construction. So again, what does the VSMP mean? What does that Virginia Stormwater Management Program mean? It means that internally, the county will have to do plan reviews, construction inspections, long-term maintenance agreements and um, inspections of best management practices in perpetuity after they are constructed. What is the MS4 program? And we'll get into more details in, in a few minutes, but it's planning for and implementing six minimum control measures as established by your permit including any, including your local VSMP pr program, which is a requirement of, of the uh, MS4 permit. You will also have some TMDLs, which is called total maximum daily load um, at waste load allocations, potentially for the Crab Creek TMDL. Okay, and that will be coming out later this year. So who are your friends in all this MS4 stuff? Well, here I show the western side of the state and the um, pink stars of the new MS4s. It's yourself, Montgomery County, the city of Radford, Radford University, the town of Abingdon, um, the city of Stanton, uh, and the uh, county of Augusta. And But we've the town of Blacksburg's been at MS4 since its inception in 2003. Same with the town of Christiansburg. So you're in a lot of good company here. And uh, we just had a meeting earlier today, and there will be some synergies that you can share some of these um, requirements with the adjoining towns and Virginia Tech, who is also an MS4. So what does this MS4 really mean? What, what do you have to do with this? Well, basically what it is, is for any water that crosses a public land, okay, that is within the urbanized area. Now I know Mike has shared that with you before, and this is an example right here of what we're talking about. This whole you can't see the urbanized area line, but this is this is in the urbanized area. This is the new Blacksburg High School, and there are primarily three drain defined drainage channels within the county's property that come to these stars. These are the outfalls. These are the MS4 outfalls. And at this point, 
where my mouse go, where it crosses back into the town is where you have your MS4 outfall and you need to do some monitoring in it in the future. You need to map all the storm sewer systems that come to those stars um, in the near future and determine what the total tributary area is or how much of that area comes down to this point, down to these stars, even outside of your public lands. So the key to understanding what you're responsible for is any drainage that crosses your property, the county's property, within that urbanized area. So here I have a couple of blow-ups of the urbanized areas and their county property shown in blue. We've also um, <coughs> taken up the school board property and shown it in pink because since it's not technically a county property, um, it's not necessarily part of your MS4. So here we have uh, two parcels. We have Elliston Lafayette Elementary and the Elliston Lafayette Industrial Park, which is shown as a county property. Those are public properties that will have some MS4 outfalls. Christian, town of Christiansburg East, we have Falling Branch Elementary. It is within the town of Christiansburg, but it's owned by the county. So um, that stormwater is the county's responsibility. In the Christiansburg area south, you have Christiansburg Middle School, Juvenile Detention Home, and several um, county administration facilities, the library where we're sitting here today, um, and the courthouse. Again, the red is the 2010 urban census area, so everything inside of that um, we're responsible for in these areas, of course. Are there. Plum Creek area, you've got a school out there, but it's not within that magic red line, so you don't need to worry about it right now. Um, Christiansburg area north, the only public properties that are county are currently owned by the school board, and that's um, the um, high school site and the maintenance facility. Again, here's Bellevue and Peppers Ferry area, and uh, according to this, the, the 2010 census, your elementary school is outside of that line, so we don't need to worry about that either. This is where it gets a little interesting here. The prices for uh, Blacksburg area west, the Prices Fork Elementary, the new one, as well as Blacksburg High Middle School and Kipps Elementary. Okay, so those two facilities, and then we also have the waste collection site, but that's outside your urbanized area, so it's not part of your MS4. Blacksburg area north, you don't have anything there. Blacksburg Central, so in, internal to the town of Blacksburg, the county owns, of course, old BMS and the library site. Any outfalls on there, you'll be responsible for. Blacksburg area south, you have the Montgomery County Park, which is just outside of your MS4 red line, so you don't need to worry about that either. And this is um, the, the park. So what does the MS4 program development mean? Okay, we've talked about the areas that you have to provide a program for. What do you have to do? The six minimum control measures, the first one, actually the first two are probably the most important. It's talking about public education and outreach. You will need to develop a website that is dedicated to stormwater management, both for your VSMP program and your MS4. It's recommended that since the county is so tied in with the public school system that you develop an educational program to, uh, for school-age children so that they raise their awareness about stormwater management. You also have to provide three outreach events and hopefully through a memorandum of understanding with the adjoining towns and Virginia Tech, you can combine your efforts there and get those three out outreach events completed. Public involvement <coughs> participation, not precipitation, participation is uh, your annual MS4 plan, which we're working on right now, and every year you have to post that plan and an annual report on your website. And um, the um, staff will have to come to you every year, probably about this same time, and give you an update on the status of the MS4 program. Illicit discharge detection and elimination. Well, first of all, what the heck does illicit discharge mean? I found some cute things here to show you. One, 
It's uh, pet waste. Don't like that one. Two, it's somebody washing their car and just having the soap, soapy, sudsy water going down the drain. It's construction debris going directly into your stormwater system. And it's just simple oils and such coming off the roadways. Um, probably saw some of that when it first started raining today. So what do you need to do? Well, the first thing you're gonna start out with, and we'll talk about schedule in just a minute, is start mapping those uh, storm sewer system and MS4 outfalls for your schools, your parks and rec facilities, and your county administrative building. All those facilities that we went through that are within that uh, urbanized area. You have to develop an ordinance and policies and procedures to deal with these illicit discharges, as well as the screening program. Even though you have a very small MS4 area, there are, there are lots of things that have to be accounted for here. You have to maintain your erosion sediment control program. And you have to, now you're gonna have to track and report all your erosion sediment control permits that um, the staff deals with. They have to report that to the DEQ. Same with the VSMP program, post-construction stormwater management. And that's post-construction. You have to develop an ordinance, which we're talking about now. Policies and procedures, we're working on those. And a tracking and reporting system. Because remember what I said in the beginning, you have to go and um, inspect these BMPs even on private lands within that urbanized area um, in perpetuity. And actually, you need to do it for the entire uh, county. The BSMP covers the entire county. And pollution prevention, good housekeeping for municipal operations. So any of those facilities that we talked about, in the schools, the parks, um, sites, you have to do something to, uh, for municipal operations. So we are already doing the household hazardous waste event. You have to develop pollution prevention plans for any of your facilities that have any outdoor um, potential pollutants that's exposed to stormwater and nutrient management plans for all um, areas where you have greater than an acre of grassland like within your urbanized area. Okay, so that, that'll be some school facilities, parks. And then you have the Crab, Crab Creek TMDL, which we talked about. We still don't know what the waste load allocation will be for the county's MS4 because it's coming out in summer of 2014. This is a great opportunity to work in collaboration with the town of Christiansburg to meet those waste load allocations. So let's kind of go back for the stormwater program. What is this immediate schedule? The more urgent part of this is the Virginia Stormwater Management Program. We're planning to have a public meeting on May 27th, work session on June 2nd, adopt the ordinance on the 9th of June, submit it, to DEQ on the 15th, which happens to be the last day that we can submit it, and implement the program on July 1st, which is a requirement. For the MS4, we're gonna resubmit our MS4 program plan on Wednesday, and we will go wait for DEQ's approval of that permit. So it should come within the next month or two. We did get comments back Yes, we do. On did. the MS4. Correct. And we are working to resubmit. So for the next five years, what do you have to do? Now, bear with my color coding here. Red is immediate. Green is in 2015. I think I used purple or blue for 2016. And black is in perpetuity. So you have to get your website started within the next year. Uh, have a couple years potentially to get the public school education program up and running and you need to plan have a plan for those three outreach events um, within the year you have to have your um, annual report on your website in a year and we have to stand in front of you and give you an annual update illicit discharge detection elimination the final mapping uh, can be done in the next um, 48 months. It says 2016, you have such a small area that I think we can get it done 
in that time frame. Ordinance and policies procedures have to be done within the next year. Screening program, same thing, within the next year. We're already doing erosion sediment control. We just need to provide a program update within 48, um, 24 months, as well as a tracking and reporting system. The VSMP, which is this post-construction, again, the ordinance, the policies and procedures must be in place by July 1st of this year because you're going live July 1st, 2014. Tracking and reporting system, which will take a little more time to get up and running, needs to be done in the next year. The pollution prevention, good housekeeping for municipal operations. You're already doing your hazardous waste event. Stormwater pollution prevention plans need to be completed by 2016. This is the bulk of the work is, is in this and is in the illicit discharge and in, and in the pollution prevention, as well as the nutrient management plans. Crab Creek TMDL, we don't know what those implementation goals will be yet. That's still forthcoming. So what is your new director of engineering regulatory compliance going to have on their plate the first year? Actually, quite a bit. Virginia Stormwater Management Program, they're going to need to do all the plan reviews, inspections, and, and prepare that tracking guidelines. For the MS4, they're going to be working with your counterparts in the town and Virginia Tech to negotiate an MOU to help offset some of the costs for uh, the educational uh, programs. Manage the stormwater website development. Coordinate with uh, Montgomery County Public Schools to develop the um, public education program. Plan the outreach events. And this is the big one again, the illicit discharge detection ordinance, policies and procedures, outfall mapping, and the annual reports that are required by statute. Those are all just a sample of the tasks that will be required in the next year. Questions, uh, board members? I just have one. Um, the education with the public school system, is that a state requirement? It is not. It is not a state requirement. It's always good to start, start young with the kids so um, that they can learn. In fact, I had a conversation with my nine-year-old this morning. He's starting to understand what it is and it starts there and you can move up to the parents and how, why this is so important. So I guess I'm going to ask this question then. Um, this education would come from, I mean, how, what is the plan to develop it and deliver it? I think that, that still needs to be thought through, but it could be part of the science curriculum. Um, I know there's some things with the MS4 program that's already being done as part of the science curriculum in, in the schools that can be incorporated into your MS4. So it's not necessarily that you have to um, create something new, but you just need to work with the other MS4 localities, the town of Blacksburg, Christiansburg, and, and um, I think the Soil Conservation Service is doing some of that educational outreach. Work with them and... So it would be them. something that you would look at the curriculum, like uh, whatever it might be, K through 12, and see where it might fit in. It might be that it doesn't fit in every year. <laughs> the reason I'm asking you this is I'm an elementary teacher at my other job, and um, we're constantly being asked to teach everything to everyone. And there are not enough hours in the day to teach what we have to teach right now. So I guess what I would suggest is, you know, like what you're suggesting, you look at what you already have in place mm -hmm. so it's not made any more complicated than it has to be because it is very important to understanding for the environment and for the children as they go through. But um, I would just, I'm just throwing that out as a piece of caution. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, I think you can also do it by having speakers going to different schools. Mm -hmm. Just kind of talk to the students. It doesn't have to necessarily be in class. Yeah, I've just seen over time how everything becomes a class that the classroom teacher is responsible for. So I'm just suggesting that from the very get-go, mm -hmm. you look at what you already have in place and how you could fit in something easily. Right. Just as a little warning, not that you have anything to do with all the other stuff that happens. <laughs> Mr. Green. Just, just one question. Does this have anything to do with the Chesapeake Bay runoff? No, no. it's not. The VSMP regulations are statewide regulations for stormwater quality and quantity control. 
uh, separate from the requirements for the Chesapeake Bay. And of course, the reason I'm asking is that we're not even close to the That's headwaters right. of the Chesapeake Bay and we still have to pay. It, it's for, well, we have, you have your own local TMDLs. I mean, it's not just Crab Creek. Uh, Struble's, um, Struble's Creek has a TMDL for mm -hmm. sediment. Uh, it's primarily the town of Blacksburg and Virginia Tech. But they'll be part, um, you know, as that gets worked out right now, you don't have a waste load allocation. So it's not just about the Chesapeake Bay. We have some really uh, issues here with local uh, degradation of our local creeks. Any other questions or comments? Good presentation. Thank you. Usually when Carolyn presents the staff, by the time we're done, we're all kind of cross-eyed. So Carolyn, thank you for, <laughs> you, you kept us moving really good tonight. Well, the board's cross-eyed too. We're <laughs> actually got through tonight. <laughs> it's okay, amazing. Okay, the next item is the Virginia Retirement System. That's gonna be Miss Hill. I want to bring you a brief update on some information that we have with VRS just to make you aware of a issue. Thank you. These are big paychecks. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Angie, did you pick the color because of the group that's here tonight for the... I didn't know that that was well coordinated. <laughs> it just reminded me of spring, but I thought that was good. <laughs> good, good coordination. <clears throat> okay, as Mr. Meadows said, we're going to talk a little bit about um, Virginia retirement system rates tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about how they're determined and how well our plan at the, for the county is funded and so an option that we become aware of. The Virginia Retirement System is a defined benefit plan, and what that means is we contribute to the plan, and at the retirement date of employees, they are guaranteed a certain benefit. The, reason, the way that we're able to determine how much to put into the plan is the VRS hires an actuarial consulting firm to look at various factors and assumptions and comes up with the rate that needs to be established that the contributions need to be made at so that the, the uh, plan can have enough assets to fund the benefits. And the rates are established every two years. Because of the nature of these factors, they, they are going to change. They have to be um, looked at at a point in time and then the rates will change over periods of time as those factors change. For fiscal year 13 and 14, the county elected to contribute at an optional lower rate. We contributed at 10.51% compared to the VRS certified rate of 13.94%. If you recall, there were lots of changes going on with VRS at that time, including they um, switched the 5% employee contribution that the county had been able to pay for in the past had to be shifted to employees. So we didn't feel like it was a good idea to contribute at the higher rate at that time. We wanted to wait and see how that all played out and the effect of that. We've gotten through that and now the um, FY15 budget has been funded at the certified rate of 13.11%, which is an increase of what we're currently funding at of 10.51%. The dollars associated with that increase are approximately $420,000. Recently, just a week or so ago, we became aware that the General Assembly is providing us the option again this year to fund at the lower rate of 10.51. We 
what have we learned of this? Um, I spoke with the CFO of the VRS several times. We had many conversations about what the impact would be at funding at the full rate versus the lower rate. And uh, basically, if the contributions are made at lower than the certified rate, the plan is not fully funded. It's, a, it's considered unfunded and a liability is created. So if we continue to fund at a lower rate, that unfunded liability will get bigger. Just keep kicking the can and I know we've talked in the past and you've heard from the school board about the um, teacher retirement and how that plan is very, is not funded very well at all. Over the past several years, the General Assembly has not allowed that plan to be funded at the certified rates. It has been funded at lower rates because the General Assembly um, that way they don't have to put as much money into the plan if they fund at the lower percentage rates. Right now, the teacher retirement plan is significantly underfunded at 62%. That means if you look at how many assets are in the plan compared to the liability, it's only 62% of the liability. At June 30th of 2013, the county's plan was funded at just over 72%, which is better than the statewide teacher plan. But we're concerned that if the county continued for a third year to fund at the lower rate, that could cause problems for us and cause our plan to become more unfunded. So, so if I'm not understanding you correctly, 13.1%, 13.11% of the, the budget currently funds the VRS at, that would keep us at 72%. Because it's a certified rate, so it should keep us at that level or help us increase. Because the goal of the rates is to make the plan B as funded, be funded at 100 percent. Yeah, the goal is to continue to to close that gap so that at right. some point it is 100 percent funded. Right. And even though this is an option that was presented to us, we we had some discussion about this, and then after Angie had a couple of conversations with VRS. Uh, you know, staff's recommendation is that we leave things the way they are for fiscal year 15, and we not take advantage of the of the lower rate because all you're doing is opening up a bigger hole for the future. But that's a we want to make sure y'all are okay with that. Okay, questions? Uh, I think it's pretty clear uh, to me. It seems like if uh, the option was given and all that option the funding at a lower rate you're just kicking the can down the road and then it's going to be the can's going to become a barrel that's exactly what killed gm and several other big businesses it was getting bigger than that one. <clears throat> well the, the the key and it's something that we talked about last week is, is the compounding effect you can shave off a little, shave off a little, shave off a little, but that little bit, if it was being contributed over time, fills that hole. So we're letting you have to pay the piper. Mm -hmm. That's right. But we wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that as well. So thank you, Angie. Any other discussion before we go out of work session? Need a motion to go out? Moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Curry? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gaines? Aye. Chair Aye. Six ayes. Aye. Next item is over business. Uh, subject A, ordinance allowing the operation of golf carts and utility vehicles, uh, Warm Hearth Drive and Litton Lane. Move approval. Have a motion to approve and second. Have a motion and a second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Curdy? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six ayes. New business. Uh, we're going to uh, add. Uh, ordinance allowing a special use permit for P and G Ventures, Agent Eight, uh, Agent Meat Tractor, for the purpose of allowing the farm machinery sales and service. 
in the Charlottesville Magic Trail School District. Has tax parcel number 067-A161, account number 006298. Motion. Have a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Creed? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Big? Aye. Mr. Todd? Abstain for the reasons previously stated. Chair Brown? Aye. Aye. Uh, I just want to abstain. Okay. And uh, other new business would be schedule a public hearing for stormwater management. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Cree? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six ayes. I guess we would uh, table subject B or? And there was one aspect of this um, that I think that I'd like to bring out. At one point in time, we received an email from Virginia Tech or, or information that they had drawn in regards to Squires. Um, after receiving that email, or right around that time, um, I sent out an email about one and, and spoke with Leslie Wyden, who's the manager of the University Club. Uh, they're having a board meeting on May the 7th, um, and I asked if she would consider adding that to the board. Uh, their board meeting to see if they would consider putting the poll in place there. I'm not certain as to whether that polling place would be sufficient uh, for the electoral board. Uh, at the same time, I'm happy to address that, happy to try to add the university club on if that's something that this board would want to consider even. Um, in speaking with Leslie, she did say that they are in some ways a separate entity on a handshake deal from 1929, I believe she indicated. Um, so there is some separation between Virginia Tech and the like. Um, at the same time, there is that close relationship and she indicated that she would want to run it by Virginia Tech first. Now, that may not be a possibility. It may not be um, something their board would want to consider or Virginia Tech may say that's still part of our campus and we don't want a polling place there either. Uh, but if the, this board wants it to be considered, I would be happy to go there on the 7th and ask them if they would consider it. I'd be happy for staff to go. I'd be happy for another board member to go. Um, whatever the board would like to do. But the to subject, this, this, this public hearing was specific to uh, Squires and, and it, it was P, and F3 and, and uh, E3. And, and that's why, in regards to that, I didn't know if we should bring it up as an addendum. Uh, and then I think there was some discussion at one point in time that we would just bring it up during this phase. It, it, I understand the squires being tabled, and I guess this was as part of new business. And so obviously it's not a public hearing. Mm -hmm. But I guess I'm just asking whether is this something that our board members would consider? Or is this something that our board members say, no, that's not something that we would consider uh, doing, or, or it's a waste of time? I, I guess I'm looking for some guidance from my fellow board members. Comments, I anyone? I think it'd be best probably for staff to handle the search for the, the alternate polling location because there's several po possible locations. The University Club might be one. I think that they, w I think Tech would still consider them part of campus, but that, that remains to be seen. Um, there's other possibilities um, immediately off of campus on Washington Street or up in downtown and places like that. So I, I would hope that staff would investigate all those possible opportunities. Um, are there other maps available? Yeah. Yeah. 
compare its exact problem to the Lutheran Memorial Church, which I think could be considered as walking distance. I think those are the options. We're not doing anything at all. So I think what we're looking for, we need staff are looking for some, some at least consensus on the board on which way you want to go, and we can bring back a change if you want to change uh, at the next meeting. Hopefully, if we can get the okay from um, the one thing about the, the university club it does meet, I think they only meet once a month for their their board. So we would need somebody to go there and say this is a possibility. It's not we're not committing to it. We're just wanting to know if they would be willing. So we would need to send some a staff member there. Well, I think all you would need right now is just consensus from the board right now because we wouldn't be. Where do you want? What kind of approach do you want to yeah. take? I don't know if we can get polling location yeah. or options. So, may I um, just go down to the podium just yes. to highlight yes. some of Yes. Just if you aren't familiar with um, the tech campus, is that um, the benefit of this, which is modifying, which is basically, as, as Marty said, this particular map, which is putting the F3, it was a new precinct, it's just kind of putting all those people who used to be in F back in F1, um, with some very slight modifications um, up here. There's a tiny bit of G1 that kind of poked down here, it actually cut right through, there was a census track that cut right through a dorm right around here. Um, this is the upper quad where all the cadets live. This is really on, on, on campus. Um, campus kind of goes like this, and then down like here. Uh, there's really no one that lives either over here. This is where the, the coal plant is. There's some academic buildings right in here. This is all academic buildings right in there. Um, this is where Squires is, academic buildings, academic buildings, there's a parking lot right there actually. Um, and then there's, there's nobody really that lives yeah, there's probably a few people that live in there, a few graduate students, but I think they're actually mostly foreign. So, so really the only people that are affected are right there, and their polling location would be just down the hill at the Lutheran Church, so that makes it accessible to them. And that's where the vast, vast majority of them already vote right now. So all you're doing is you're taking out with this, this precinct is you're adding these people who had to drive all the way up, um, out of Patrick Henry to the Blacksburg Community Center, and you're allowing them a walking, walkable polling location there for people who live on campus. Um, the other thing that this does is puts almost everybody else on who lives on campus, this, this new E3 district, um, is the idea would be to find uh, a, a polling locations just off of campus and whether that's, um, they're, they're even highlighted here, the possible locations. Um, the Lyric Theater as one, um, maybe the, um, the Blacksburg Branch Library, which is A2 right now, but might be able to be moved. Um, there's uh, Blacksburg Co Campus Ministries, which is right off of campus on Washington here with a big auditorium in the back. Um, University Club would be right here-ish, I think, if I'm remembering right. Yeah, right about there. Um, again, that, that's technically on campus, but because they have a separate agreement, it might, it might be a possibility. Um, again, all of those things would be walkable for the vast majority of students who live right in this area, right in here. So, so this seems to me a, a reasonable um, alternative to what's the, the kind of situation we find ourselves in so, um, right now. So. Now we would uh, need consensus for staff to investigate the possibilities of establishing place for E3? Any, any of those locations. Yeah. I, I, would, I would say, can I just add one thing that I forgot yes. to mention too? Um, Marty kind of touched on this just a bit, is that the benefit of not adding the F3 and folding it back into F1 is that you only need one location right. we, and there isn't as big a space mm -hmm. needed because there aren't as many voters going to that, mm -hmm. um, that double precinct uh, voting location where in the previous version. So. It would be about, is it 3,800 voters? I don't remember. It would be an E3? A lot. If you remember when we first started this process, it was like eight with both of them. And really could put the whole canvas in one precinct because it would, it would create two yeah. other precincts. So that's why we can't move the F3 areas. Um, of at least the F3 on campus in the E3 because it may be too big. Big. 
busing for that polling place is about 3,800. Is mm -hmm. that the number about? Uh, no, it would be E3 now. Is that, am I thinking the right numbers? Okay, not registered voters. Okay. Because they're probably more than 30. Remember, under state law, to get up to 5,000 registered voters, Split the yeah. Yeah, That's why I was thinking 3,800 seems to be sticking in my mind that that would be about what E3 was, but I may be wrong. Four is F3. I'm looking all over. Oh, oh, we don't. We don't. There, there, there is name. no F3. The F3 was the proposed that, new precinct we would have been creating, but we're not. Okay. It, under this plan, you wouldn't have to do that. Okay. Y'all just talking about F3 and I keep looking yeah, at sorry. it. Yeah. No. There's only two. There's only F1, no, there's F2 we're currently now. Okay, Mary. Okay, I agree with um, the analysis about F3 because, you know, I've, I've been a resident of District F for a long time and have worked the polls before I ever ran for office. And, and uh, we've always had students that walk to the Lutheran Memorial Church. It's not that far from Upper Quad to walk there and back. So I think that's fine. I think it would be great to find another um, place to put the E precinct. And one of the such suggestions Matt had suggested was the library downtown. I would the only thing I would say about that is that it's been a long time um, a location, um, a precinct location that people are very used to going to, and um, it is further off campus than some of the other locations that were mentioned. So. I don't know, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know if it's good to push out a precinct that has been long standing for A, that's located in A, in order to put an E one in there, if you know what I mean. If we could find something closer, I think that would be better to the campus because it's, I mean, it's a further walk. It's not that it's that long or anything, but I would just caution that I don't know if that would get people upset that are used to voting at the library in A. And one other location other than University Club, we might look at the German Club, perhaps, that might be. And that, that's further, it would be into that, or, or, or towards the, more towards the lower quad. It's not a perfect solution, but still walking distance, I would think. It's a little bit farther. Let's be further. I mean, are you looking for something that, I guess the idea, Matt, are we looking for something that is easier for the students to walk to, yeah. right? So I guess in my thinking, you know, thinking back to the old days when I used to be there, it seems like you should have something that's a little bit closer to the edge of campus. That, I mean, you can think about the German club, but like, you're gonna be, I mean, you'd be walking up that road, then you'd have to walk up the long driveway to get there. And I've talked to, it was interesting, I talked to a couple students, or not students anymore, but they're actually young people that work at, at our schools, and they told me they never voted in college because it was not practical. And I said, wow, you know, because yeah, I was talking about how to make it more accessible. But so I'm, I guess I'm thinking if we could find something that was closer to the campus would be better. You know, <laughs> we're not here, y'all, talking about getting close to camp. I've got uh, constituents that drive 15 miles mm -hmm. to, to vote uh, in several different directions, mm -hmm. and I don't. My heart don't bleed for any of them. Although I do think we need to mm -hmm. get a place over there. You know, if it's a difference of 150, 200 feet, or whatever, uh, that's make. You know, I, I think we need to look at the best place to That's close and, by, yeah. and, and go from there. But, uh, you know, time and distance at that point, you know, from, from where they're at, you know, difference between one block and two blocks, my well, heart don't bleed for them. Well, the German club would be longer than a couple blocks, I'm thinking. Maybe well, I'm yeah, wrong. I mean, I mean, but I think it's, yeah. it, it's still a preferable location than the, the airport. And I think that's yeah. the point, is that, you know, the airport right now is, is a 20-minute mm -hmm. bus mm -hmm. ride, mm -hmm. not, not counting the wait for the bus, mm -hmm. um, out, and then a 20-minute ride back. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to get there between classes, it's just not going to mm -hmm. work. Um, you could, you could if you hustled, walk out to the German club. I, I absolutely agree that, you know, someplace closer, like maybe one of these, one of these ministries that are right on the corner of one of these churches, mm -hmm. 
right on the corner you of campus, get there or um, more someplace like Galera, or maybe even maybe there's another place downtown we're not thinking yeah. of. Um, then that would be those would be ideal. But worst case, the German club would be better still. And and I agree with Mary. I would hate to move somebody who's been used to voting one place at A two, and mm -hmm. then moving them I, I just don't think that that's for me that doesn't seem right moving one set of voters who've been used to going one place uh to that that's fine then that's withdrawn that's a suggestion other comments well i think that it's as close to as we could keep it in proximity to the campus the only thing when I think about like a German club for an example, I don't think the bus goes down Southgate Drive and it's a Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good distance to walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially if you have to walk over and, and wait in line for twenty minutes or something like that. But if I could stay on the edge of campus and step over a little bit into one of those places that that's close, I could get back to my next class in time. And if you had to go to the German club and you, you live somewhere in there near the, the the drill field or somewhere like that, that's a pretty good distance. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you got a bicycle. I think it's a pretty good distance yes. on a busy campus day um, if you had planned to walk instead of waiting for a bus to drop you off somewhere over close. They could drop you off on Washington Street or, and, or, uh, and I guess you'd still have a good distance to walk. Uh, but I think it would, when you get that walking distance in there, and if the weather is not suitable, you know, it's rainy or whatever, that it's going to discourage people to, to go vote. And, and there's a lot of students who, I mean, my son's on campus, he doesn't have a car. And so I I've heard, you know, somebody gets in a car, drives 15 minutes to go vote. I drive about 10 minutes to go vote. But you don't have that choice if you don't have a vehicle. Yeah, Especially park. if you got to walk to the cage to get your car <laughs> because they require you to park that in the cage. Yeah. You walk but to the cage, get the car, and then you drive over, then you got to put it back in the cage. But maybe we think about the German club maybe as a fallback. Right. It, it, which would be better than the airport? Yeah, I think it would be. Yeah, it would be closer. So now, do you ever, okay. what do you think about the the F1 idea? Just ba it's basically keeping it kind of it is. Yeah. I so. think it's good. Okay. Just from what I have experienced. I mean, it's it's fixing a couple tiny little things. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Turney, now what do we do with setting up this date? Do we table this or? Yeah, we have to table this. We, we don't have a phone location. That's right. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking to say you'd be appetizing something that wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't true. So um, I guess do we need a motion to table it or, or in a second? I guess I moved to table it. Okay, he moved to table it. Okay, he he moved to table it, and this is a second to table it. Okay, have a motion and a second to table this item, and uh, all in favor? I mean, uh, <laughs> to the clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gaber? No. Mr. Cree? Aye. Uh, I don't want to go Mr. King? Go forward Aye. Today. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Five eyes, one hand. Subject C, Proclamation 100th Year Anniversary of the Corporate Extension. So moved. Have a motion. Second. And a second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Gaber? Aye. Mr. Cree? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six ayes. County Attorney's Report. Aye. County Administrator's Report. Believe it or not, no report, Mr. Chairman. You mm. kid. Okay. It's the first. We're going to write that down. Mm -hmm. I went through everything twice. I really don't have any hot potatoes for you tonight. Okay. Board member reports uh, Supervisor Biggs. Um, I don't have a report either. Just a question. So when you table when you table that, you know how you we table things. We always put a time to come back. Since this, we will bring this back but it'll be a different form. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. That's okay. Okay. okay just, revised, that was my question. Revised. Thanks. Oh, pardon. Supervisor Tuck. 
the report. I think we took care of it. With, that my report is going to be the university club. And so and I made another suggestion in regards to Blacksburg Baptist as well, but I don't think that's necessarily suitable. Supervisor Gabriel. Uh, just very briefly, um, looking forward to the meeting with Blacksburg tomorrow at 7 o'clock, Blacksburg Transit. Um, I might be just a couple minutes late. I'm dropping my son off at his baseball game in <laughs> Charlottesville, so I should be there in time, but if I'm a couple minutes late, I'm on my way. Okay. You might get a rain delay. It might, it might yeah, it might be rained out, so oh, it might not be a yeah. problem anyway. So. Supervisor King. No report. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mr. Creed, Supervisor Creed. Oh. <laughs> you, oh my goodness. Well, I guess it's down to me. Uh. Okay. What I'd uh, like to do is, uh, I guess, have, I guess, a resolution in support of. I'd like to appoint a committee uh, to study the Rhino Public Safety Facilities needs, and it would be. Uh, what happened is that for probably a year or so, the Rhino Rescue Squad has been busting at the seams, and uh, the rescue captain and the chief has been in contact with the county administrator and I. And uh, so, in order to approach this, I'd like to propose appointing a committee to study the facility needs, and the committee would. Uh, would compose of the captain of the rescue squad, the chief of the Rhino Fire Department, the Money Montgomery County Administrator, the Board of Supervisors Liaison to the Fire and Rescue Commission, the Montgomery County Emergency Services Coordinator, the Montgomery County General Services Director, a citizen appointment of like Kelly Walters, and uh, the board representative from the Rhino District. And there would be a subcommittee in that group, it would be more or less like the working group, and that would be like the lieutenant from the Rhino Rescue Squad, the assistant chief from the Rhino Fire Department, the Montgomery County Emergency Services Coordinator, the Montgomery County General Services Director, uh, the County Budget Manager, and a citizen appointee. And uh, they would basically study the needs and, and, and make recommendations to the facilities committee which would also make recommendations to this board. I don't expect anything that w to happen uh, uh, immediately. I expect them to set up the meeting dates and to make some kind of uh, do some studying and some com conversations between themselves and maybe some of the people out there and some of the fire and rescue members and uh, look at the needs and this would probably be a plan that probably wouldn't be implemented for if they say for an example we can move the rescue squad in the fire department and build a new fire department uh, and look at along with that you could probably move the uh, the uh, collection site which is right up against the school out there uh, so I'd like to have uh, 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 some support and, and maybe a resolution supporting the appointing of, of uh, this committee and the subcommittee working group. And I'd take some comments if you, yeah. Sorry, can you clarify? Um, first of all, I'd, li I'd like to, s to see you know, the text of, of any such resolution. Um, second of all, um, I'm not opposed in principle, but I would want to know specifically what the authority would be vested in this committee um, and what what its charge specifically would be. Um, there's also the issue is that my understanding right is that the chair of the board of supervisors and the liaison to the fire and safety commission are the, are the same person, but that's that's you, Mr. Brown, right? Mm -hmm. So would you be serving would you have two votes on the committee or would you be would there be a vote would it be a voting committee uh, i don't know what the facilities committee is that this, this this group would make its recommendation to is that on the fire and rescue squad or is that within the administration somehow um so i mean i, I would just need a, a little bit more clarification about what specifically this committee would be doing and how how empowered it would be to do to do the things well the doing. committee officially wouldn't have any what you say power it would be a committee that would make uh, advisory uh, uh, more advisory or recommendations to this board 
I mean, it would come up, the working group, you'd have a working group who would make presentations to the facilities committee. What's the facilities committee? The, the facilities committee would, would uh, consist of the uh, rescue captain, the fire chief, the county administrator, the liaison, the emergency services coordinator, the oh, county... So so, I'm sorry, so, so you're suggesting that this, this working group would make recommendations to the committee. Right, they would be the, the ones. the committee would make recommendations to the board? Yes, and uh, uh, yeah, of how to address those needs. Yeah, I, I think I'm there's curious why there's the layers there. I mean, why, why aren't we just, if you want to do this, like, why aren't we appointing a committee to make recommendations to the board? Like you mean one committee instead of two? Yeah. I don't understand well, we need a working committee because I don't think that the working committee want to take on another bunch of. Uh, I don't want to take on another bunch of meetings and meeting with this and that. So you have uh, the uh, lieutenant from rescue squad, assistant chief, the county uh, uh, emergency services coordinator, general services, and and so forth. Those are the people that they might want to meet two, three times a month. But sure. we'd set that, let them set that up to, for their own, to well, their own convenience. Just make their recommendation directly to our board. Well, if they made it to the uh, the facilities, the the big committee, we might be able to say, "Hey, that's not going to work." So why make it to the board? I think, and we can't support it in recommending it to the board. I think the thought was a working group with some of the guys that are in, as I call it, in the trenches of, right. the, of the fire and the rescue folks. They know the operational needs better than I would or, or even Neil right. or some of those folks. And so the thought was let those guys flush out some ideas and because I don't I don't presume and a couple of the other folks, I don't presume to know the issues right now. I, all I hear quite often is we're out of space. Well define space. What do you need? What what are the issues? Let the working group come up with the ideas. Then that facilities committee would come back and say, you know, all right, well, you've come up with these two ideas, but that's ten million dollars. That's never going to fly. Let's let the working group kind of crunch the ideas, bring that to the facilities committee to vet out, and then once there's something that the facilities committee feels the board needs to begin discussion to talk about funding, that was that was the thought process. Um, and so when would this committee be? Until would it break up immediately after it made its recommendation to the board? It wouldn't be a. Would, I don't see it as standing. Have been a standing committee with the county that would be indefinite. I think once uh, it was given its charge and 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 the this board was satisfied with whatever the results had came up, then the committee could be disbanded. Would that require a separate action, or could that be written into the original? Resolution. I, I'm just I'm, my concern, right? Is just empowering a committee that might have more power than than we would be comfortable necessarily giving it, or yeah. that that could become a standing committee that would feel empowered to make other recommendations to the board in some other form, or that might exist even if it doesn't I, meet. I understand what you're saying, but probably in the in the resolution appointing that there task could be specific and once the task was completed the committee would be uh, dissolved you just want to see written out what the yeah I just want to see something in right okay. you know the way we're talking about it's fine but until I see it in writing I would okay I'm can we come back or can we come back to the board with a resolution establishing this committee and everybody can view it and Say yeah or no. I think that'd be that'd be that'd be fine. I have a question too. Yes, sir. Shouldn't there be at least some presence of John Q. Public that's not? Open well, we're looking at a on the working committee a citizen appointee from out in that area. I didn't I didn't hear you. I think have the appointee. I remember him saying, was it uh, Kelly? Well, Kelly would be on the 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 oh, okay. the, the big part. But uh, when I went down the numbers, I mean, a, a lieutenant from uh, Rhino Rescue Squad, assistant chief uh, from uh, Rhino Fire Department, uh, Neil, the emergency service coordinator, uh, Steve uh, Phillips, the general services director, 
Mark uh, Magruder, the budget manager and a citizen appointee, and uh, sitting there thinking about uh, maybe somebody from PSA because when you start looking at facilities or land or something like that, there might be a need for some public utilities. So I guess I can get with the staff and, 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 and Marty and, and have them uh, generate a, a resolution <coughs> establishing this committee. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, and, and the whole the whole thought process I think all along talking to the with the board chair about it is this is it, and it's devils in the details yes sir but it's it's advisory I mean That's it's right. it's created to bring information back to this board so you guys can make some decisions and hopefully any question you'll have at that point they will have already kicked it around and can answer. That sounds great. I prefer to see it right. Yes sir. <laughs> well. That's all I have, and I look forward to seeing each of you uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow seven night at uh, seven o'clock at Blacksburg Transit, and we look forward to having a wholesome conversa conversation with the town of Blacksburg. And we are adjourned. <laughs>